morning, everybody. If I could have everybody to go ahead and please be seated. I got a very special thing I'm going to do this morning before the service. If everybody could go ahead and be seated for me, please. Everybody have a good week. Tomorrow we celebrate a very, very important day, and it's a day that a lot of people definitely, uh, well, not everybody, uh, some people I've seen have actually overlooked this day, but it's Veterans Day. And we have a lot of things, we have a lot of veterans that we need to be thankful for because we live in a country where freedom is not free, and it takes men and women of our armed forces to... Uh, that go out to sacrifice their lives so that we can have the very freedoms that we have, that we have, been able to come to church on Sunday morning. That, uh, that's, uh, that's one of the liberties that we, that we have here in this country. And we, we owe it to our veterans, we owe it to our soldiers who are serving right now overseas and around the world. So at this time, uh, before we get started, I was just wanting to ask, do we have any veterans uh, with us this morning. Well, we got one. Stand up. If I may ask, what uh, what branch of service was you in? Army. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your service. I know that we also. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service, sir. Well, I do know that we also have family members that have uh, that have gone on that have served. I I too had uh, two grandfathers. One served in the army. One served in the Marines. And I had an uncle that served in the army. So uh, so I know that we definitely do. So today being Veterans Day, uh, if you if you know anybody that has served or that is serving right now, when you see them, be sure to to thank them because. Uh, that's something that uh, we don't do enough of. And uh, today being, tomorrow being Veterans Day, that was one thing that we wanted to kind of bring out this morning real quick is to uh, thank our veterans and uh, to celebrate them. So at this time, I'll uh, go ahead and turn over the rest of the service to uh, Melanie. I believe that they got a song that they're going to sing. What manner of love is this that you would lay down your life? You paid the price, the sacrifice for redemption. Now I am determined to know Christ and Him.
Uh, also, real quick, I'd like to uh, recognize Mr. Brad and Brother Robert up there. Uh, Brad was in the Air Force, and Robert was in the Navy. Amen. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody out to Hunter's Chapel. Um, this morning we've got just a few announcements. Today is Youth Sunday, and we'll have fellowship lunch following the service. November 18th is singing night. A&M Ramblers are going to be our guest singers. That's next Sunday. Uh, the Monday right after that is November, November 19th is the Y'all Lunch. Uh, it'll be the Thanksgiving lunch. See LaVonda if you would like to bring a dish that she needs. And LaVonda had something she had to say about that. And then uh, December 8th will be our Christmas dinner in the Fellowship Hall at 6 p.m. Is there any other announcements? Have any birthdays or anniversaries? Okay, then at this time, if I'll have everybody please stand and three of our youth to come up and take off. Brother Bob Jim, we bless off. Hearts 
hungering for God. Amen. If they are, that's where your heart ought to be. We ought to be hungering for God's love in our life. I thank Him for His love and His mercy. We want to go to the Lord in prayer and we want to remember the ones in our church family who are sick and afflicted us. Remember Wayne and Carol and Roger. Uh, Lord, I don't want to forget anybody. Charlie and CC. They're just a multitude of people that we need to pray for. Us, us remember that. Us, us pray hard that God will be done. But if he, if it's possible for Him to reach out and touch those, provide them. We know the Lord has a purpose in our hearts and our lives. Let's, let's pray for God's purpose and God's will. Do you have any spoken requests before we go to the Lord's prayer? Casey Hall. Call it. Anyone else? Remember that. Anyone
Let's go.
before Gabe starts preaching, I just feel a pull, Gabe, for you to come up here and let us pray over you. I appreciate that, Sister Stacy. I didn't need it. <sighs> Mess celebrated a little too much at the Alabama game last night. <laughs> I tell you, I'm feeling it today. I'm feeling 40. But you know, I'm so thankful that I serve a God that, regardless how I feel, you know, He's always there. He doesn't change, and He He will empower us to do what He wants us to do. And all we have to do is just bow down and be humble, and allow Him to use us in every way. Whatever way he wants to use us, we have to be willing to allow him to use us in that way because that's the only way that's going to work with God because he's not going to change his mind for you. He's not going to change his plan for your life. But if you obey him and you'll submit to his will, I assure you everything's going to be okay. Now, I kind of felt this morning like everybody was just about as tired as I was. You know, and uh, Brother Colin said morning, and there's about maybe three people said morning. I didn't say morning back. I'm just going to be honest. I'm stepping on my own toes, you know. But I started feeling ashamed because I come to God's house to worship God. You know, and this is the only opportunity I get during the week to be with 50, 70 members that want to worship God as well. Most of the time during the week, we're by ourselves. We're alone. When we come into God's house, we have other Christians that we can worship Him with. And I think we take that for granted so much in America. Now, I did a lot of screaming last night, but I stayed Christian about it. I didn't cuss or anything. The lady next to me, she got a little carried away a few times. She just gets so mad we didn't get that first down, you know. And I was like, five years ago, I was that lady. Before I decided to relive my life for Christ, I was that lady. I was obsessed by the things of this world. Every little thing just wrecked my life. Because I, I had fallen away from God and I had quit trusting in Him. So I felt like I had to do everything. But, but that lady, she was there by herself with her daughter. They drove 12 hours because her daughter's thinking about tennis school there. I never even got their names. It wasn't important. But uh, as the temperature started dropping, you know, I don't know why, but when me and Caitlin got out, we had some of them hot hands. Anybody ever use them things? You know, those things are, that's, that's a great invention. I'm just telling you last night, it was great. But we had brought some extra ones. And the lady, she just had one little pullover and her daughter had a little pullover, you know. And I like, Caitlin, hey, uh, how, many, how many of them do we have? So we was able to share those. And though I didn't really get to witness to her about Christ, I got to show her God's love. And it made a difference. And I thought a couple times, Lord, should I just go on and witness to her right here, you know? But Lord said, now you just plant a seed. You just all you're doing right now. You're just going to sow a little seed. And when she goes back home, she's going to remember that there was this dad and this daughter that showed her kindness. And that could be the very thing that changed her life and gets her back on track. Because it was my own sister 
that, that had the act of kindness to me and my family. She'd always invite us to church. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I've actually told this testimony here. I get confused when I travel. But we was walking through Walmart, and Dana and Clay was in there. And uh, I'm not glorifying them, because I need to tell you all today, I ain't, they ain't nothing good in this man. My righteousness is filthy rags. Everyone here today, unless you got Christ's righteousness covering your sins, you are unrighteous in the eyes of God. And Dana and them said they'd been walking around Walmart for almost two hours. And lo and behold, we ran into each other on the frozen food aisle. And she said, oh, hey, you know, and they said, I know they invited us to church. Hey, we got, they told me they got a new pastor down there at New Bethel. And that's the church me and my wife met in. So I was like, okay. And, and the Lord had been dealing with me. My sister had no idea the Lord had been dealing with me for almost a year. Hey, you got to get back into church. But I was putting it off, you know. I was chasing and doing what I shouldn't be doing. I was trying to make all this money and work all this overtime, working on Sundays and doing everything I thought was supposed to be done by Dad to take care of his family. But I didn't trust God in that time. I was the one that was trying to do it. And, and, and after they talked to us, Dana told me later on down the road, she said, after that moment, I knew it was okay to leave. They walked out of there with one loaf of bread that was in Walmart two hours. But they said they just kept wandering the aisles like we couldn't remember why we had came to Walmart that day. And it was, yeah, I've been there too, brother. But, but this is one of them God interventions, okay? <laughs> because if she had not have been there, there's no telling where I would have ended up going to church. Because see, at New Bethel, people knew me as a 17, 18-year-old boy. I'd answer the call to preach, and they had heard me preach before, so there was a little bit of trust there, even though they hadn't seen me for 12 years. So as I started going back to church, everybody started asking me, hey, when are you going to preach again? When are you going to preach again? I'm like, I probably won't ever preach again. I don't, I don't deserve to be able to preach God's Word. Because I've done nothing but run from that call for 12 years of my life. I'm not worthy. And I'm still not worthy today, but I'm doing it because who am I to tell God no? Amen. Who are we to tell Almighty God no? Amen. And if things are bad in your life, I'm not saying that it's all because of sin, but I'm saying if like we're going to be talking about Daniel today, and I love on you Sunday, God always puts it on my heart that we all grew up knowing as kids. The stories that he told and Daniel and the lion's den and what happened to get him there. But Daniel trusted God. Amen. Regardless of his circumstances or situation, he had complete trust in God. And you know what? To me, that kind of trust is, that kind of trust is faith. That's real faith. It's real faith when it don't matter what the storm looks like, you say, Lord, it's up to you. Whatever happens in my life is in your hands. And you allow things to play out. But too many times, our faith consists of answers to our prayers. There's too many times when the Lord ain't answered my prayer in a month. He must not be up there right now listening to me anymore. But God's always there. He don't ever quit being there. It's like Elijah, you know, when he went and he tore down the poles and all that stuff and, and they, he called him out, you come and make sacrifice to your God and I'll come make sacrifice to my God. And he was mocking them. They were, he told them to pour water after their offering wouldn't catch fire. There's a part to say, did your God go aside? And that's the same aside used with David and Saul. When Saul went into the cave, he went aside. That means he was going to take care of some business, okay? Now, it's funny to think about that, but Elijah, in all empowered by God, had enough boldness to ask those people, what, did he step aside? Is he no longer sitting on the throne? Is he distracted? Is he sleeping? Because Elijah knew the real God never sleeps and never quits and never stops. Amen. But Elijah knew more than anything, regardless of what the circumstances of that day was, his God was going to win. Why? Because there was only one God, and Elijah believed that with all his heart. And Elijah sat there and he watered down. Like I said, I know we're going to talk about Daniel in a minute, but I just feel led to go this way. And I'm so thankful for the prayer this morning because I tell you, after climbing about 200 stairs last night, I could barely walk when I got home. I went straight to bed. Poor Lexus, she come in there. She had to rub my thighs for me. They were cramping up. My toes were sticking straight up in there. Because, you know, it's all right to be heavy if you ain't walking upstairs. <laughs> you go to walking upstairs, it's no longer okay to be a heavy man. Because it will wear you down. And I got about halfway, and my daughter, she's about to take off. She's an athlete. You know, I'm like, I, And I played it off because, you know, I got a little pride. I'm, a, I'm an Alabama fan. 
And I, I walk over to the edge, I just pretend I'm just admiring the campus. And the whole time I'm doing it, I'll say, God, if you don't give me the strength to go up these next 20 steps, I'm going to die right here. I'm going to die right here, and i got to preach tomorrow. <laughs> so I knew I was going to make it, but for, for a part of me, I thought, you know what? They were tailgating out there. I'm sure they wouldn't mind. I went and just watched it on TV, and I'll just go back down these stairs. Because in all honesty, I wasn't sure once I got up there if I was ever going to make it back down. I got to the top, I'm <sighs> sitting down, <laughs> and my nephew, Chris, is like, are you okay, Uncle Gabe? I was like... <sighs> <sighs> And I just started praying. I felt like I was going to die right there. I said, Lord, I'll be honest with you. I love Alabama football, but it's not worth it. It's not worth it. If it wasn't for my daughter, I would not be up on that high. We was up there in Nosebleed Station, like four hours from the back wall on the north-north end zone, where it just so happens all the wind blew last night. I know because I wore it on me most of the night. But it was that lady and her daughter, they were about to freeze to death. But I just knew that if I have extra, it was meant for somebody. If the Lord told me, take it with you, same when you go to church. If the Lord says, take this with you, you don't leave with whatever He gave you. Because I guarantee you, it was meant to give to somebody today. And I think in faith, and I'm so glad that God answered my prayer. He didn't have to. It was a football game. It's probably the least important thing. I know that may hurt a lot of people's feelings, but God probably don't care about Alabama football. I'm just going to tell you. He cares about the people playing the game. He cares about those young men that he's hoping to get saved before they go to NFL and make all this money and make fools out of themselves. Because it's happening. Money makes you do stupid things sometimes. But as I was sitting here and reading this through Daniel, the whole reason Daniel got thrown into the lion's den is a lot. You know, we get worried about our politics today. But it's been happening since Daniel's day. They do the same thing. There's always been some conniving, some backbiting, some destruction. Always somebody trying to bring a good man down. You don't want nobody to ever talk bad about you. Don't ever try to do anything. Because the minute you try to be successful, somebody's going to come against you and try to tear you down. Now, if you're the good news is, if you're successful in God and in what He's called you to do, then nobody can tear you down. You better humble yourself from time to time, though. And that's something I've been having to go through. You have to humble yourself because it's okay. I know Brother Sam, when you get to preaching, you get to singing, everybody's patting on your back. I know it's a little easy to get self-righteous. But that's when I have to say, Lord, you know what? Tell me, remind me of every bad thing I do. I know the devil does that a lot, but there's times when I want God to remind me just to show me that I'm not perfect. Amen. Because if I ever start thinking I'm perfect, you might know you better not ever let me preach up on this stage ever again. Because if I'm perfect, then I've done messed up. Because Christ, my Bible tells me that Christ was the only one that could be perfect. And Daniel, he didn't know Christ, but he knew God. And Jesus said, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. But have you ever thought about why God allowed himself to just become... He made himself a man to show us how we're supposed to walk because the world done got so crazy, they done forgot why God created them. They've lost their purpose. And today, the same thing's happening again. Everyone is losing their purpose. They're losing their focus. They're taking their eyes off of God and they're putting it on self. And it is destroying the United States of America. Amen. The whole reason a lot of people get elected is because they basically pay them with all these little benefits they give them and everything else. They'll vote for somebody that's going to give them something free. It don't matter if that person wants to murder babies and destroy towns and cities and take God out of everything, as long as I get the free phone or whatever, they're okay with it because I got something out of the deal. But that's the state of the world that we live in today. What are you going to do for me? My question to you is, what are you going to do for God? Amen. There's a lot of empty church houses out there today because people are refusing to do what God says. Right. And if we could just get a hundred people in Walker County that would be more like Daniel and Elijah and Abraham, all these greats, these flawed people, but they serve God with all their heart. If we could just get a hundred in Walker County, it, it, man, they'd be a big bright spot on the map. Just God's glory filling a place in the spiritual realm. You think the drug houses will start shutting down? I believe so. You think people would start looking for God instead of looking for drugs to fix their problems? I think so. 
But nobody's willing to stand for anything today. And teenagers, you got it worse than all of us. I was a teenager once. It was bad then too. There was choices I had to make that made me an outcast. But you know what? Those choices I made that made me an outcast saved me from dying and going to a bad place. Amen. It's not popular to be a Christian ever. Even you inside of a church, there's people that's going to talk bad about you and they're supposed to be Christians. Go to Daniel chapter 6. It says, this is after Daniel had told him his dream, told the king his dream, and, and the king was just so proud, he was ready to just give Daniel everything. And Daniel was just like, no, he said, you keep your gifts. Why? He didn't care about the gifts. He was doing what God told him to do. Aren't we supposed to be undoing the same thing today as Christians? It shouldn't matter about what kind of blessings we're going to get from God. It should matter that God told us to do it. Amen. Because whatever we don't receive here, we're going to receive over there. And over there, you're never going to not have it. There's not anybody, anything, anyone that can take away any of your heavenly treasures. Amen. The only one that can stop you from getting them is you. Man, what do you think Daniel did when, when Jesus went down there with the, with the gates of hell and death and said, all right, boys, come on. I guarantee you Daniel's one of the first ones in line ready to get out of there. Think about it. I know not, not the hell, like we talk about hell today, but it was a show of the place of the dead. But until Jesus came, the only ones that I know of in the Bible that mentioned got to go to heaven is Moses and Elijah, and that's because in the New Testament, they were there on the Mount of Transfiguration, okay? But after... Jesus died. said he got the keys to death, right? And he said, where I go, I prepare a place for you. Was that just to everybody after he died? No, it was not. It was for everybody before. The ones before believed in the, first, believe in the Christ coming, we're believing in Christ coming. They knew that they could not do anything of themselves, and we know that we cannot do anything of ourselves. The only way you can truly serve God is completely give in to him. And you got to think about Daniel, and, and I wish we got a little bit more detail sometime about how he was feeling, but as sure as God put it in there, then people would use that as an excuse to not do something. Well, Daniel was crying and didn't want to do it, so now I don't got to go and do it, and God still loved him. But Daniel, when the king come to him and told him what Daniel knew before the king even come, God gave him the wisdom, the knowledge of what was happening, that, hey, you're fixing to be bound up because this law is being passed that's telling you, you cannot worship me. Who was they supposed to want him to worship? The whole law was to worship the king. America right now, they're trying to put things in place where you worship the king and not God. You worship the system. And not the eternal God that lasts forever. You worship the money that you make or the, the, the insurance that you get so you can get seen to at the doctor. We worship those things. And you say, no, I don't. But if when you're sick, if you're completely dependent on the insurance to get you well, you're in trouble. Because insurance just pays the doctors and not every doctor is a Christian. Now, I'm not talking against doctors. I know it sounds like I am. But what I'm saying is, where is your heart at when you go to the doctors? Is it truly saying, God, I'm going to go here because I believe you put this man in my path. He can help me and I can get better. Or is it, this man is just going to make me better? Or are you worshiping the doctor more than you're worshiping the God? Because there ain't no treatment in the world that can cure you if God ain't in it. You can take time all day and it'll get to where it eventually wears out and don't work on you no more. That's what a lot of the drugs in the community right now, they start off on something small and it's no longer enough. They have to keep amping the doses. They amp the doses. They say, you know, they're taking everything. They're still in front of grandparents, the ones that loved them, the ones that raised them, the ones that picked them up because their parents weren't around. The very ones that loved them, they're destroying. Why? Because that's the world we live in. But we have a choice as Christians to, to advance God's kingdom and to do what He says and obey His will. And even though, you know, everybody says, well, we're supposed to obey the laws as Christians and God tells us that we're supposed to obey the laws. But God never tells us to not obey His law. Amen. Nowhere does it say that. And Daniel knew if it, if it was a fight going to go on between the king of the land and the king of everything, 
the king of everything was going to win. So he said, okay, fine. I'm going to go on in here and I'm going to get thrown in a lies den. And just because of the nature of Daniel, just the way he was, he's a pretty arrogant fellow now. He was a rebel. Any teenagers want to be a rebel, be a rebel like Daniel. One that's, that's, that's willing to serve God regardless of what this world. If you rebel against this world, you're going to please, against, please God. But you've got to do it in love and you've got to do it in hope and you've got to do it in mercy and forgiveness. Without mercy and forgiveness, the church doors might as well close. Might as well close. But what I love is the king, and I'm not going to read verse for verse. I'm pretty sure pretty much everyone in here knows this, knows this history. i got to catch myself. Sometimes I don't want to say story, but it's not a story. It's history. It happened. So many times a day people want to think, oh, it's a story. That's in your book. This is history. This happened. I'm going to be amazed right now that my throat's still holding out because I couldn't even talk to her last night. Praise God. But because I'm doing what he wants, guess what? He's empowering me to do what he wants me to do. But I could have very well, as tired as I was, we was 20 minutes late to Sunday school, I could have let that guilt from that tear me up. But instead, I said, Lord, forgive me. I, wasn't, I didn't do my due diligence last night. I was not a horse prepared for battle. I allowed the world to stop me from getting in and studying your word, like just deep, you know, because when I use them, when I get into the word, I want to get in there deep and I want to dig stuff out. But God still works in everything. And even though I stand before you in a perfect man, I can bring you a perfect message today because God is perfect and His Word is true. And I know it's hard. I've had bad news in my life. When we found out about, uh, Sierra gets mad at me talking about her, but when we found out that one of our twins, we didn't know her name was Sierra at that time, when we found out Melanie was 18 weeks and she had spina bifida, they found an ultrasound. There was a little knot on her back. My wife had called me that day and told me we was going to have two girls and I was so mad. Because they told us fraternal twins. I thought, 75% chance. I looked it up online. And online is supposed to be true, right? If you believe everything you're reading online, you're in trouble today, fella, my friends. I'm just telling you, not everybody is spreading the truth. And what's so sad, we don't even bother to check the facts anymore in our nation. We just believe whatever's told to us. If we're for whatever side, a lot of us now, a lot of us... Whatever side we're for, they're perfect. We don't question anything they do. But now I do believe that anybody that says they're going to at least try to serve God, that's who I'm going to vote for. If they're pro-life, that's who I'm voting for. Because I believe every child should have a chance to live and, and get to know God in this place. And I know this place is bad and it seems hard, but not all the times is bad. You know, we've got to remember the joy of the Lord that we had in our youth. Yeah. Amen. It's hard sometimes the older you get to remember, you know what, there was a time in your life you could jump, do backflips, fall down, break your arm, break your foot, and you'll still run. Mom and Dad's how to stop you. But for me, that don't happen no more. If I break my foot, I'm, I turn into a big old baby. You can ask my wife. She loves me, but I turn into a big old baby. I wished I had more faith like Daniel. I wished that when bad things come against me, I wish I could just be like, <laughs> you think you got me? I serve Almighty God. Whatever. Oh, you want me to go lay in here with these lines? Okay, cool. Cool. I can see Daniel feels nowadays. That's just the way I picture him. Okay, cool, king. No problem. And the king was scared to death. The king, Daniel wasn't up all night praying and, and begging forgiveness and repenting. The king was scared to death because he knew Daniel was a chosen vessel of God. Yeah. Amen. He knew. But he, Exactly. You are either a light or you're not a light. If the world can't see you, you're not shining your light. You don't hit it behind a bush. But the king tells Daniel, and the king got mad at himself because he had passed this law, and at this time, that had, nothing could overturn it. It was signed, sealed, it was done. There wasn't no veto. And when he realized that those people had played him, he could have then said, oh God Almighty, I'm sorry, I've made a mistake and God could have overturned everything. But instead, because he was worried about those other people that he had placed in power overthrowing him, he's like, well, you're right. It's a decree. I've got to do it. But as he's throwing Daniel in, I don't think he was announcing this out loud either. Like, yeah, Dan, hey, don't worry. Your God's going to be with you. I don't think he wanted them other guys hearing him. You see, like now and then, we're trying to be our own gods. And that's what it is to be born again. When you become born again, you realize you're not God. 
And there's a hole in every person that's born. There's a void that must be fulfilled, that must be filled with the Spirit of God. Now, children, they, you know, God is merciful, and children that don't reach age accountability, they're in heaven. They're waiting on you if you've lost young ones. They're waiting on you. They've been in Jesus' feet ever since they left this world. What better place for them to be? They don't know nothing about Obama, Trump, the nuclear blast. They don't know nothing. They've just been in God's presence. And I know it's sad, but I'll just be honest with you. If I'm not going to be able to take care of my kids, there's a, God's the only one I can trust to take care of my kids. You know, you get a new job, you fill out all these insurance claims, and you do all these different things for life insurance, that. It's a sad time for me. You got to get $10,000 insurance on your kid just to make sure you can bear them if something bad happens. And even in that, those people don't care about your kid. They don't care about your burial expenses. They're just wanting to profit. Because they know only one in every hundred or a thousand, whatever the number is, is, only, is actually going to use that insurance. This world is so corrupt. And the more money gets easily dispersed and, and the more people make means by guilty doing bad things, the worse it's going to get. Because that's what changes things. In this world, for a non-believer, money changes things. There's people that'll, get, that'll take payment to kill somebody. It's there. Money is so sad, but, but so many times, what passes laws, a lot of times it's money. If you got bad people in office, it's money. It's people with no morals and money. I didn't even know this message was going to be about a corrupt, you know, kings and kings. I didn't. But I trusted God. And that's what He's put on my heart. And, and I don't know where we're going to be in 10 years in this nation. It scares me to know that I got two 10 year olds that's going to have to grow up in it. And if we as Christians don't start being more like Daniel and rebelling against an unrighteous judges and unrighteous kings and unrighteous politicians, then our youngins, Daniel was a youngin, and he was taken out of the king, out of the promised land because the people turned away from God. Now God took care of Daniel and his friends. We know Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. We know that God gave them favor and He esteemed them. But those were only four people out of thousands that got taken. And I can't, you can't tell me that thousands had fallen away from God. There was other believers there, but they were suffering. And it doesn't seem right sometimes why God allows us to suffer, but who are we to question God? I believe in faith, but faith isn't getting answers to your prayers. Faith is having trust that God's got the answer. Amen. We don't know what this or that is going to do. We don't know what this or that in our life is going to change for somebody out on the street or someone we run into Walmart. It's just one act of love. And you don't forget that. Or I don't anyways. There's times when I was a child where people would come up and just give me a piece of candy. There was an older guy in one of the churches we went to and he always had a pocket full of candy. I mean, all he did, he just give you that candy. Man, he was a nice guy. He didn't ever intrude. He didn't try to, you know, do anything, impress you. He was just like, that. he was just doing that. Showing you that, hey, you know what? I know I don't look a lot like you, but I love you. You know, a little 10 cent piece of candy. At that time, it's probably a penny. You know, but the more we get caught up in wealth and riches, the farther we're going to fall away from God. We've got to start getting caught up in His righteousness and the righteousness and glory. And then if we'll submit to God's will, things will eventually turn around because God don't like... You go through Daniel, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He gives them all an expected end. He brings them up to a place where people respect and admire them, but there's a journey that they must take before they can get there. You want to be a legend? That's a big thing in America right now, and especially with our young people. Do you want to be legendary? They'll go jump off a cliff with no parachute, do 500 flips off of a cliff into a water of rocks, being stupid, trying to be legendary. How long does that film last on YouTube? About five minutes. Oh, we got a million hits. Two years later, nobody remembers them people. But if you'll serve God, you're going to be remembered for eternity. Because God says He'll remember your works. 
He will never forget the things that you do for Him. And I know the more suffering and pain that you go through, the easier it is to think that you're forsaken by God, but you're not. God is just growing you. He's moaning you. He's transforming you into what He wants you to be at the end of your days. Amen. To give you an expected end. You know who I remember from my childhood? The preacher that, that led me to the Lord. The Sunday school teacher that taught me the song, red and yellow, black and white, it doesn't matter. We're all precious in Jesus' sight. Those are ones I remember. Those are ones when I get to heaven, I pray that I'm allowed to go to them and hug them and explain to them that that little bit of love that they showed me changed my life. And though I wasn't always perfect, I remembered their actions and their deeds and it made me want to do right for God. Because if they could do it, some in a wheelchair, some can't hardly speak, some can't hardly see, if they can serve God, then surely I can. There are no excuses. Wherever you're at, God can use you in your life. And we got easiest access. You don't even have to go door to door anymore. I mean, Facebook gets a lot of hits. You get a lot of likes. People may not always like it, but a lot of times they see it. That's a good mission. That's a good field to be in. If God were to put it on your heart, never think, if God stirs up your heart, never think it's too small. A thing to do what it is He asked you to do. It could be as simple as shaking someone's hand or giving them a hug. It's nothing too small. If God asks you to do it, there's a reason for it. There's a meaning for it. And He needs you to do it. And if you don't do it, He's going to find, He's going to go to the next person and let them do it. And they're going to get your blessing. Because you refuse to do what God said. You know, it's kind of sad. I know we're all tired, but we should all be standing up. These young kids, man, we are so blessed and thankful and, and just blessed by God to have the young people that we do. Amen. They're not perfect, but they're here. They come on Sundays. They're trying at least halfway to obey their parents. Same as we all did when we were teenagers. My mom, I'll tell you too, I wasn't no perfect child. But when I went to other people's house, she told me I better respect what they had. And I better do what they say. Because if she heard one bad thing, it was I was in trouble. We can go ahead and get a song together. I'm about to run out of throat. My voice. But praise God, we made it. We're all here today. Amen. We all have a new chance to serve God. When you wake up, let God be the first thing on your mind and not the last. Yeah. If you're only praying for His will when you're laying down on your head on pillow at night, there ain't no wonder you ain't getting no sleep. Because He's trying to prepare you for the next day. And I'm just guilty now, I'm telling you. But I've learned that if I'll put God first, first thing in the morning, my days go a whole lot smoother. But He has to come first in our lives. <coughs> Sorry about that.
There's rest for the weary, a rest that endures. Come Thank you, Jesus. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can. Lay down your burdens. Lay Listen to you. Let us seek you out. Read the Holy Word. Help us. Feel the 
come to the Lord. Give them strength. We know, Lord, they face a different world than we do. But we know, Lord, that you can help them. Give them the courage and strength that they need in this life.